Thank you. Still, still, I would like to come back to the. Yes. Okay, we have a question here, but maybe I can just make that point because I, I would, I would really like to to bring the discussion a little bit more back to on a on a concrete and pragmatic level, because uh, we we have been talking now about about uh, the the basic income, which I think is a great idea, but let's maybe focus on facilitation techniques. Let's focus on how can we really create a co-evolution process especially in a neighborhood like Wedding, where so many different people live together, how to create a common, a common scope for different stakeholders, different people living and working in a neighborhood. How, who can do that and how can we do that? And I would be really interested to hear a little bit of ideas and input also from the audience, because I'm sure there are people who want to say something. So, here. Hello? Do I need the mic? I guess so. Yes, definitely. Um, so what I think what is um, what is in Berlin at the moment a very I, I think what is going on in, in in Berlin at the moment is that also lots of people live in Berlin uh, for the better life uh, they don't come to Berlin because they want to make a, a career whatever but they live here because they think this is a place where they can feel well and good and they also in Wedding I talk with so many different neighbors right from like the teacher to the academic to the guy in the tobacco store and all people said okay we want to do something to make the world better the city better so they all have this thought and this impulse and I think we all have this as well and I think we also pretty much agree on what you say on stage so I think there's like all this goodwill out there in the city especially here and um, I think the question is how to get more actions and, and also uh, how to open spaces for people who want to do something but they don't know what. So the question is what can they do? For instance, uh, when we talk about basic income, I agree. So uh, what can I do? Talk about it uh, with my neighbor? Is that all I can do? Get to do action uh, for a better world? You know? So I think, I think it's also a question like what can we do here in Berlin now as actual steps? And is it important that we work together more and have more exchange? Entschuldigung, ich habe nur kurz einen kleinen methodischen Vorschlag. Wenn jemand jetzt auf Deutsch äh, Input bringen will, dann übersetze ich äh, hier vorne. Äh, falls da sich jetzt jemand unsicher fühlt, äh, im Englischen. Wir haben hier zwei Wortmeldungen. Vielleicht, uh, maybe we start over here. Yeah, I'll, 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 here's, here's an example, right? We want some concrete solutions, right? I'll give you a concrete solution. Here's what you can do tomorrow to make the world a better place. When you walk around and you walk, see somebody on the sidewalk, say hello. Just acknowledge their presence. Give them a smile. You know how that works? You've done that before, right? You're walking around, you just say hello to somebody randomly, and all of a sudden they go from a scowl, like, oh, hello. You know, it's like it's a, a sign of basic respect. Matter of fact, there's a there's a there's a there's a concept that we're we're gonna try out at the Bauhaus called a Grus zone. We're gonna put signs on either end of the sidewalk, and that just means that in this zone, when you walk through here, you are you are completely free and welcome and encouraged to say hello and greet people, meet people that you don't know, a stranger, right? Open up the dialogue. You ever ride the train and everybody's sitting there with their headphones on and like they got iPods and everybody thinks everybody's the psycho, so who wants to talk to anybody? Well, it's all you. All you got on the train right there. Everybody's thinking each other's disciples. Nobody talks to each other. Just open up a little bit, and that's a concrete step that everybody in this room can do tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after, and the day after. There was a question over here. Yeah. There's a question over here? Yeah. And then the. One of the things that I expect from the from the city is that um, most of the time when we we think that we go to the university, we learn um, something that happened to me and pretty much most of the people that are my age, the young generation, is that what you said, we haven't learned enough from the schools or from the universities. Yeah. And it, there's a mismatch of what we have learned and what the labor demands 
needs. There are some needs in the, in the labor market, probably jobs that are, we don't know how to find a job right now, like you are saying. Uh, the, 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 the problem, what I would expect from the city, is that we need how to develop new skills. New skills of understanding and the new skills even though to speaking or to thinking. Uh, one of the things that I would recommend as an example what to do is to put ourselves in a in, like in different shoes. I would say like you're put in a different situation that gets you out of the comfort zone. What makes you uncomfortable? That would be my 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 quote. What makes you uncomfortable? And, and that starts when you are so comfort in your zone and then you have your bike and then you can eat, you can take the train and things like that and you can speak. I don't speak German, so that's, that makes me uncomfortable, but it, push, it pushes me, you know? So one of the things that we lose the skills because we are in a comfort zone. We, we think that we're in Berlin or in New York, we have everything, we have food. One of the things that makes me so funny when that I live in New York is one of those kids from the Bronx, uh, they thought that the milk comes from the supermarket. That point, I mean, there is young generation that they don't know where the food come, come from, or it, where the, the farmers, or all the logistics, or the things that to have this milk takes you to get to your mouth. So when we get so used to this zone, to a comfort zone, we don't have more skills, so put you out in a different, in a different. That's my thoughts. Yeah, right on. Well, my name is Jürgen from Bedding. I don't know how many people from Bedding are here. Just up your hands, please. Okay, this was just because I was curious. Um, well, the whole discussion was terribly intellectual. And I really did appreciate your little practical example at the end, but the rest till now was theoretical, intellectual debates. We have already, I guess, since 30, 40, 50 years since we know that the modern technological development in the 20th century started to, to go in the wrong direction. Um, there is something very simple from Ed Kessner, there's nothing good, just do it. Es gibt nichts Gutes, außer man tut es. And I think it's really it's amazing, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm wondering to hear a question in this room, what can we do? We are, most of us, terribly good educated. We grew up in one of the richest countries concerning um, welfare and education. And it can't be true that we ask ourselves what we can do. This, for me, is a classical sign that we think much too complicated. And everything what we can do as long as our arm is reaching, this is the right things we can do. We can't save, big, uh, change big political systems or the, the, the whole rules of, of, of global systems. No, but we can do what our own arm is reaching. And when you want to change things, I don't know, who of you is reading daily newspapers? Like daily? Or? Daily newspapers or weekly newspapers. And also the very simple ones like Berliner Zeitung or Tagesspiegel. So is it really just about um, seven or eight people here? Okay, so now I, maybe, I... Maybe I don't understand your question and I feel okay. like it's cool, you know. Um, no, 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 no. Um, don't be so critical. Uh, we were listening to the, audio, to the panel all the time, now um, the audience starts to talk. Um, everything, everything we... Everything we have to know, actually, we can read in short articles in daily newspapers. We don't have to go to universities to read something about the problems we have. And we get all the informations. And we, when we don't know them, then it has a reason, because we have uh, priority. We are not interested. We are looking on the wrong, the wrong things. Or there are things which appear to be more important for us. But actually, we know everything. So the question is where to start. And one very practical thing to start is, and I don't ask now that anyone has to rise up his hands uh, because uh, Adrien feels annoyed, annoyed about it, um, but I'm sure if I would ask, half of you would answer that you still bring your money to a conventional bank. So think about it. 
and we, we had so many informations about um, who to deliver the money we save to give to a bank who supports projects that is bringing something ahead what we need actually in our society. So the first thing you can do tomorrow is not smile at your people in the street because in, in wedding, um, try not to do it in any case, just with people you have a good feeling with. Um, but um, take your money to a bank which does the right thing to support projects that we need actually. No Commerzbank, no Deutsche Bank, no Postbank and all these uh, conventional banks. And this is something, this is not necessary to explain to people who are very well educated. Please start and do something. You have the education for it. Thanks so much, Jürgen. And I basically agree, but also I see a lot of fields where this is not so easy. A lot of fields where which you can't access right away with just reaching out with your arm. And I'm referring to alternatives such as open source technologies, for instance. It's not so easy to switch your uh, proprietary software system to an open source system or to completely change uh, the way you work, for instance. For many people, it's really it's an issue. And what we need here are people who are really able to translate on both sides, who are able to understand the ones who, the engineers who develop the new systems, but who are able to translate to those who use those systems. And this is something, um, it, 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 it comes back to what you said and also to what Scott referred to. It's, this, it's a specific quality. A friend of mine, she calls it Schnittstellenakteur. I don't know how to call that in English, maybe an interface actor, someone who is really able to translate in all these different directions, like a, a, a relay, someone, someone who is able to really bring this, this change about. And therefore I'm not so sure um, if, if the answer is just, you know, do what is obvious, do what, what, you, what, what is within your reach, but I think it's really, it's more sophisticated because there are more complex systems behind which we have to approach. And there is the big challenge, I find. So, very personal statement, who would like to maybe... Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Um, especially if you're, we're talking about um, social systems. In Germany there's a quite comparatively very good social system. But still, like comparatively, really. Now, but still, especially in Berlin, we see how important it is and, and how much this is transforming. How, how can we afford our living spaces? And then not only our living spaces, but our working spaces. It's getting tighter and tighter and we see it every day. So what mechanisms are there in the city um, that will be able to provide us with, with long-term affordability? And this is a, this is, we talk about the, the um, the um, income, the basic income for all, but uh, in in the end, it's really there's really a much more important uh, mechanism of affordability for for the built spaces that we live in, and it's um, we can talk about social services, so social social living, but it's a we have to find alternatives for that. Because there's um, the city doesn't have any money. There is no there, there is no more social social housing, and there won't be. And there, so what are the alternatives that and uh, what are the alternatives that will provide long term solutions? And what are the mechanisms that make that work? And it's much more complex than just saying ownership is bad. Because if we say that, if we say if we consider ownership is evil and bad, and everybody should not own their own their flat, and everybody that does, so, so that's um, just opening up the market for for everybody else to come in and buy our flats, and then we'll be buying them, we'll be renting them for everybody else. We need to come up with ways that look beyond that, that that make a, a construction of affordability of long-term systems. Um, that, that provide the possibility on very different levels um, in a much more complex way than, than saying black and white, um, yes and no. Thanks, Daniel has a remark on that. 
not only on that, also on that what Jürgen said. Um, I agree completely with you that uh, it needs a lot of concrete actions to change. And I would, in fact, in that case, what you mentioned with the banks, uh, it would be really interesting to see, in that case, who would rise up his hand or her hand, um, who has its money, his money in the, in the wrong bank, in a bank that supports a system where we can't live in. Um, you just said, you can't say ownership is bad. I agree with that. But on the other hand, we have really, really to mention capitalism is what destroyed our our global stable, uh, uh, our, our global resilience, the uh, Widerstandsfähigkeit. It is the capitalism that destroys the commons of the world, and it is the capitalism that destroys the market. And as long as we don't mention that, we will not change the political order that blocks many, many people in their ability to do concrete things on local level. And um, on the one hand, it's very important to start, let's say, initiatives like Prinzessin uh, Garten, like uh, 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 Kunststoffe in, in, in Pankow, uh, like all these thousands of initiatives that are working on local level here, trying to, 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 to transform their, their uh, urban quarters where they live, uh, trying to build up communities of interests. But on the other hand, we shall not forget that the orientation that, and, and the framework that means our abilities to act has to change. And uh, in that case, you also need the discourse, the intellectual discourse, cause, uh, and, and not only the intellectual discourse, but a discourse that goes on the frameworks, on the social settings. Because Jürgen, I tell you, since I'm, I'm working very concrete on local levels, on regional levels, with many NGOs together, and the belief systems in, in the mind of many people blocks them very much to, to bring their power on the street. And I completely agree with you that in Germany we have not even two percentage of the society has, uh, ha has their money in, in, in banks who supports uh, ecological projects, who supports social projects, who supports the social empowerment. And uh, that is not even two percentage. And the rest of it, I mean, in the statistics, we have something like 10%, but that is, that is just greenwashing. And, uh, and we have to understand that we are living in a political order that blocks creativity, that blocks the ability to bring the power on the street. And we have, to, we have to target both. We have to target both. We have to target the framework, and that has a lot to do with mind settings, with orders that destroy action on, on, on local level. And, uh, I, I think it is very important to mention both. And, uh, and I find it very good that you mentioned that aspect of the bank system. Because who in that room would be fine if in the media market on Alexanderplatz 95% um, uh, of the products would be gone? Yeah. Who, who, who would agree with that? Ich frage mich auf Deutsch. Wer wäre damit einverstanden in diesem Raum hier, wenn von heute auf morgen 95% der Produkte im Mediamarkt und ich würde jetzt, mich würde echt mein Zahnzeichen interessieren, 95% der Produkte im Mediamarkt nicht mehr existieren würden, weil sie nicht ökokorrekt sind. Ich wäre damit einverstanden. Ja? So, es sind schon relativ wenige. Wer in diesem Raum wäre einverstanden? Ja? Ja, kommt drauf an. Kommt drauf an. Who would be fine with that? If the, if the, if the heritage of their parents would be uh, uh, divided in between uh, uh, the, the, the social system and to the poor people. Wer wäre damit einverstanden, wenn wir eine massive Abschaffsteuer hätten? Ich, ja, und ich würde relativ viel erwarten. Who would be who would be fine with that if we uh, would uh, break down the system of the banks and the investment uh, culture, and that would also mean that all your future consumer patterns would be maybe gone. Wer wäre damit einverstanden, wenn wir wirklich das Finanzsystem so ändern würden, dass wir nicht mehr unseren Wohlstand auf Kosten der anderen in der Welt leben würden und in der Folge wir uns alle mit unserem materiellen Konsum runterfahren würden? Wer in diesem Raum wäre denn damit auch einverstanden? Es gibt hier eine Frage. Oh, I, I just want to provoke a bit, because yeah. I mean, okay. 
It's not the right people here, sorry. Yeah. Not to change and to save the world. Just speak up. Maybe we, if you speak loud enough, maybe we can. No, 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 it's not. Please come. Also, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, well, I totally agree with what you said and also what Jürgen said. I think the problem is we are the wrong people to ask those questions to right now because we are a selected group of very well educated people, as you have pointed out, and interested in this topic. But how to bring this discussion into the forum with the people on the streets with everyone? Because I think that's what could only make the change to really discuss our systems. And if even here we don't have the, you know, the uh, willingness to to change the system, then how would we ever get that into the street? And that there outside another question that might be said. Um, the capitalism has been rising for about 150 years um, and over that time we lost this balance you talked about. So how long do you think it will take to recreate the balance? The, the we create. Ecologically yeah. or uh, economically? Balance of the system. The time system. I don't see the the system. I think I have an answer to that question. This is something you can ask yourselves and, and ask everybody around you this. Right? Ask yourself this question. At the end of the day, after all the things I've done today, the job I've done, where I've been, the people I've communicated with, what has been my effect on the world? Am I some middle manager making uh, widgets and a key account sales manager making plastic toys for coming from China? And I spend, you know, I get a good decent salary, but what's my effect on the world at the end of the day? Am I a student studying uh, architecture and looking forward to making big buildings someday out of cement that is like completely an unsustainable material? You know, what is it? Did I was I a, was I a real mean to my friend today and made him really put them in a really bad mood? I mean, the world is a feedback loop. That's how it works. You put something in that's little, you have an effect on everybody and everything around you in some way. Simply reflect on that idea. And then uh, I think a lot of the answers then come forward as to what we can do better by looking at what we've done that's not so good. We got something back here? Yeah. Well, my question is, as we, wow, there are lots of people in the seat. My question to, um, is well, you know, we thought it get, uh, would be a good idea in the first step to get more change to actually build a public space uh, where we can debate those kind of questions and also hope to get practical steps. So, do you people agree that this can help and this can change? Because, or like, can this bring change? Because at the moment, are we sitting here and everybody says, well, you know, this doesn't help, and what can we do? So, do you think? New public spaces where we have this kind of debates is a big, is an important step. Or also, uh, what kind of public spaces do you think we need for this? Yeah, a, that's that's the question. That is it. I want to do also. Um, one thing, back to what when Scott said, to start by saying hello uh, to anybody or smile. <clears throat> Today, uh, I like to ask for directions, even if I know where I'm going. It's just, it's nice when somebody, when they feel like, oh cool, I'm gonna help this person out. And it's not a lie, you know, it's just kind of funny and it brings the community together, like, hey, where's this street? Even though it's two streets away, they say, oh yeah, it's this way, and they feel good. Today I asked somebody where a uh, voice in uh, Danziger Shasa and he's like this way. So I keep walking, don't find it. And then I asked these other, these uh, three kids and I'm like 12 years old maybe. I was like, so should you go and voice Danziger Shasa? And they said this way. And I was like, cool. So regardless, it's just a, it's a nice way to also speak. And you're right, uh, whoever mentioned when you try to say hello, which I've tried many times coming from California, everyone's just super chill out. Like, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? And sometimes you do get that look down. You're like, 
well, maybe I should never ask somebody how they're doing again, <laughs> you know? And the second part um, about how somebody raised the question, how do we bring this awareness about money, the banks, the um, problems, and the willpower to do something for the community, for this uh, movement of sustainable living and this and that, I'm still trying to figure that out. I've tried with uh, my family, 99% like of them make over 130,000 a year and almost every day I want to speak with them. It's like, why are you still an artist? Why are you still, why, when are you gonna make 90 grand a year? And currently, during a debate of who had more money um, at my house when I visited, my grandma asked me, she's like, when are you gonna cut your hair, and be this and that, blah, blah, blah. I said, never, because I'm never gonna want to invest which they're doing right now for a hotel project in San Diego. 200 grand per family they're investing. So in five years, my uncle dishes out a bunch more money to everybody. And they're 50 years old, 55 years old, and they're still asking me. So I asked them again, I said, because one, I don't want to invest in some project that doesn't do anything besides, I don't know, another fancy hotel. And two, take a little bit of that money, maybe 1,000 of your 200 grand and give it somewhere else. You know, that's what I'm doing with expression. That's what all of us are doing with expression. Uh, maybe we, don't, we can't donate because we're living, uh, struggling if we are, and if we're not struggling, then we're just making a pie. But um, asking people what they would do, I think, uh, closest to you, and people you trust, and people you rely on, instead of the public where, yeah, it's hard to reach out. You know? I think everyone can actually start in the everyday life of doing things. Uh, it starts uh, just switching off the light when you leave a public room or when you leave a room. Um, if you can afford it by um, organic milk, it's only 40 cents more. Everyone more um, of, of that consciousness because I mean here we're like a really um, like specific group and not including the whole society. We're not like a, like an image of. Um, the society now. So if you ever can um, try to create um, consciousness about these little things of everyday life, because I think um, in our society we're kind of, a lot of people get used um, to being really um, um, commode, do you say that? Um, um, because we, we basically have everything, we, it doesn't harm actually leaving on the light, you know. But if, if we can try to draw more attention to these little things, um, then maybe we can already start making the world a better place. And I think uh, once you've got that consciousness, it moves really quick on that uh, it gets, that the movement gets out of it. So, yeah. And look, you guys say we're like this special audience. Look, I talk to people every day in the street. Turkish kids, Lithuanian mothers, I talk to people in the street every day and you can communicate with them and they get it, okay? It's just about addressing the issue and approaching it. That's what we do with this Baumhaus project. It's to bring people together, no matter what demographic they come from, there's certain things that we all share. We all need to be, you know, have need to be respected. We all want to express an out, a sense of admiration, love, affection outwardly. We all want to receive that. We all have beliefs. We all have rationalizations. This is what it means to be human. You can talk to anybody about this stuff. So it's not just insulated in our room here. You can just walk right out here, just like you said, just go out and do it.